Good morning again. For those of you that may not have been with us at the beginning, we have a candle burning. This candle is a symbol of our light. I want to welcome you to the third Sunday of this year, where the series is Order My Steps. Order My Steps, Lord. And today, the sermonic theme is Knowing Your Why. Knowing Your Why. Stand-up Christian comedian Michael Jr. speaks to full stadiums all over the world, and he began doing something in his comedian stand-up comedy. In the middle of his performance, he would stop and just begin to have a conversation with those who came out. He would pick one person, one random person, and begin just to have a conversation. These conversations he began to air it on YouTube, they're called 10-minute breaks. And so in one of them, one of these 10-minute breaks in the middle of his comedic performance, he talks to Daryl, and Daryl's a music teacher. So Michael Jr. is funny, so he asked the guy, can you sing? You know, you're a music teacher, maybe perhaps you can sing. And so the audience laughs a little bit, and the guy says, yeah, I can sing. And so then Michael says to him, well, well sing us, sing us a few lines of Amazing Grace. And so Daryl begins to sing, and it's like, wow, <laughs> he really can sing. There's this beautiful, beautiful baritone voice that comes out. And so you would think that Michael Jr. would say, hey, nice job, Daryl, and go on about his business. But he does something different. He says, well, we can, we can see you can sing, but I want you to now sing that version. I want you to sing that version where your uncle just got out of jail, you got shot in the back, you know, I want you to sing that hood version. And so Daryl begins to sing the same song all over again. And let me just say it was a multicultural setting, so it was diverse people, but it was all men. And as he begins to sing this time, you can see men bobbing their heads, men beginning to stand up, men beginning to clap. And when Daryl finishes this time, one man walks over to him and gives him a big hug. Same song, but totally different. The crowd is electrified. See, the first time he sang, he knew what he was doing. He sang it and he did his job well. There's a whole lot of people that are good at their jobs. They're good at what they can do. But the second time, he knew why he was singing. In this third series on Order My Steps, I gotta ask as good church people, we know what we are doing, but do we know why? Has the church perhaps lost its way. Our church joined TPIRC, which is a part of the UCC. It's, they wrote for a grant, and the name of this, you know, the, what the words stand for are Thriving Pastors in Revitalizing Congregations. We are in our third year of being a part of this group, and it looks like a few times now I've been in different meetings with this group, and they show me this video. I've seen this video a few times, and I've seen how people respond to it, both in person, but the video online has millions and millions of hits. And it seems like this question resonates with a lot of people, knowing your why. Why do we do what we do? Why are you in relationship with the folks you're in relationship? Why are you in the job or the profession that you're in? What does God want to do through you and why? Why do you come to church, virtual or in person? Why would anyone else want to come to any church, much less this church? Look around, <laughs> or look around any Sunday, or think about the past few Sundays or the past years. You see, the presupposition is that many of us know our what and our how. We know what we do, and we know how we do it. But most of us don't know why. And so we drift, and we wander. And we go through the Lord's Prayer another Sunday. And we go through the motions of life. But there's this disconnect. Why? Why? I remember when I was in seminary, which seems a little bit of a minute ago, and I was doing my field placement, the pastor would ask me these why and what questions. And I would try miserably to answer them, because if someone asks you a question, well, you should answer it, you know? Questions are meant to be answered. And he knew, and I knew, that I didn't know the answers to the questions that he was asking me. 
And it was hard to sit with no answer, but that's what I believe we are called to do. We're called to sit with questions that have no answers. I'm not asking you a question for a quick answer, but a hard question for you to sit with week after week, to search and to seek and to wrestle and to have the question wrestle with you. I don't think there is any one answer. It's a journey to the deep and a conversation with God. I am still answering the question my mentor asked me. This is where we enter the Bible today. Jesus was so clear about his why, it's scary. He knew exactly why he was here. Jesus was super clear about his why. Every day he oozed with purpose and passion, and he was clear, I don't have a lot of time. He hadn't gone to Toastmaster. He hadn't read the seven habits of highly effective people, and so he was rough around the edges. Hey, you, get over here. For the religious folks, he had a word. Hey, you, stop judging people. Hey, you, take it down a notch. Hey, you, really, you aren't as together as you think you are. Hey, you, your sugar, honey, iced tea, it stinks too. For the rich people, he had a word. Hey, you, sell everything you got and give it to the who? Poor. Hey, it's going to be harder for you to get into heaven than a camel through the eye of a needle. Hey, you, invite everyone to the party. Don't, don't just invite certain people. Hey, you, pay equitable wages. For the disempowered, the beaten down folks, Jesus had a word. Hey, you, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is what? The kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. For sure, they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. You aren't as bad as you think you are. He had an answer for those with low self-confidence. Hey, you, stop putting yourself down. Those guys over there, they ain't really all that much better. The grass just looks green. I came for you, and you can make it personal and you can add your name to it. So when I went to my media spot earlier in this month to ask this question, why church, I got over 20 responses. People wanted to talk. I have shared some of those responses over the last two Sundays because we are in a series. But here are a few more responses, and I'll share some next week as well. Samantha says, I was raised Catholic and stopped going because of their exclusion of queer people and because they are sexist and don't allow women to hold the same positions that men do. I kind of tried to find a church I'd like better and then somewhere along the way started feeling like <clears throat> I was more agnostic or atheist and realized I don't miss it or need it. That's Samantha from Virginia. Talene out of South Carolina said, nature is my church. Helene said, from a mission standpoint, the church is irrelevant. And Anne, right here in Chicago, said, I realized that organized religion was just not for me. I am continually reminded how the church helped me form the person I am today. But I'm on my own path now. Hear the shift. Diana says, it helps me to do things good. It helps me to be communal. It was there for me in a big way when my family needed more help than our birth families could give. It's a way for me to give back for others who need the church to be there for them too. It helped me develop my musical and leadership gifts and offers opportunities to use them. It offered other opportunities for growth and education. And it's an important source of moral teaching. Jesus. A few other people talked about how important it was to have community. Jody says, I think we go to remind ourselves of our connection to God and our faith. The world is so wild right now. We need space to reel that all in. It's a form of therapy for us. We could be arguing over something petty before church and after a tiring, difficult week, but we always come home with a feeling of calmness and family togetherness. Then again, it does feel good to be lazy some Sundays and sleep in. 
I think the why question is not only important for us to answer personally, but I think the why question is important for our church to answer. I have had some wonderful conversations with folks. Two people asked me to call them, and we talked for an hour, and I'm just listening. I think if we, the church, keep asking others who do not go to church anymore, and just in case you haven't noticed, that group is growing bigger and bigger, something might emerge. One high Parker shared, I know church is important, but it's just not compelling enough for me to come anymore. As we explore and take risk as the church on the corner, I hope this year we can sit with we don't know the answer and sit in that awkward, curious space of asking and listening and discerning. A long time ago when my church was worshiping with another church, and I went to church in Evanston at this time, I drove recently by the same church and I was shocked to see that it was closed. It was not only closed, but it had been renovated into a gorgeous, beautiful home. A bit sad about that, but that's a reality that's happening in our world. But two decades ago, I had arrived at this church early and there were a couple of churches that were invited to share. It was a Martin Luther King uh, program. And so we were worshiping together, a few of churches. And so I got the opportunity to do something that I love doing. I got the opportunity to sit and just observe people. I'd gotten there early before my folks had shown up, gotten out of the car, walked around, went in and observed the people at that church getting ready for other church folks to come. And then something happened. I call it amazing grace, when amazing grace finds you unexpectedly. An old crippled man in handicap was making his way to church. His movements were uncoordinated. They were struggled and they were labored. Once in the church, he started helping out as well, as much as he could. And it warmed my soul because that is what I believe drew me to the church initially. We take those for whom the world might otherwise overlook, <clears throat> and we say, you are somebody. We value those who are forgotten by the mainstream society. We give a counter message to greed and capitalism in our world. Ideally, we should not reject anyone. We don't always reach our ideal, but we know what it is. We open our doors, and since opening our doors is not really working, we might have to change how we get our message across. The what and the how might change, but our why, our why remains intact. <clears throat> In this passage today, Jesus begins his ministry. It's the beginning of his ministry. It's the start. And he declares more or less these words, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I can't stop doing what I'm doing, even if you ask me to, whether I'm in a synagogue, whether I'm in a church, whether I'm by a pool or at a well or at a bus station stop or by the water or by a boat or during the storm or in the storm or on Sunday or on Monday or Tuesday or Saturday or whatever day, I cannot stop. I am on autopilot because God's spirit is on me some kind of tough because God has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Do you not see the people among you? Do you not see the real people? Do you not see the hurting people? Have you not a clue? Do you not see people struggling in life? Do you not see the broken people? Do you not see the fucked up people? He has sent me to proclaim release of the captives the locked up people, the incarcerated people, the mentally ill people, the people talking to themselves, the people in shame and recovery of sight to the blind, folks who cannot see their way out, blind to the way forward, blind to possibility, blind to hope, to let the oppressed go free. Second chance, baby, Jesus, fix it, freedom. Those who are out without mistakes, get out of the way and let let some folks have a second chance to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. God sent me, period. Jesus was clear about his why to bring good news to the poor, release those who are in chains, help others to see, let those who get beat down go free. He knew his why, but do we? Do we, the church, know ours? Amen. Amen.